All right, so now we move into lesson four of characteristics of linear relations, and it's slope of line segments. So slope of line segments you probably covered in previous grades, but we want to be really solid in this foundation. We know that slope of any sort of given line is represented by the rise over the run, which in other essences we could say is equal to the change in y over the change in x if we're talking about the Cartesian plane here. Now, we know that rise is positive if we count up and negative if we count down. And then when we talk about the run or the x values, we know it's positive if we count right and negative if we count left. Now, they're going to give us a bunch of line segments in class example one here, and they say we want to determine what is the rise versus the run and then determine the slope from these things. Okay, well, to determine the rise and run, what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the following. So let's say we start off with AB, which AB is our first line segment on the right here. When we calculate this, what we're going to want to do is say, when I go from A to B, what, what happens in terms of rising and run? Well, we rise two units and we go over from two until what looks to be positive nine, which means a difference of seven units. So therefore, when we go to our box below here, we're going to say that our rise is equal to two, our run is equal to seven, and our slope, which is sometimes denoted or most often denoted as m, is equal to two divided by seven or two over seven as rise over run. Okay, we look at C to D. Well, whether we look at C to D in terms of we go from C to D or even D to C, let's say we do this in terms of the ordering of the variables. I'm going to go down by some units and then over by some units. Well, in order to go from C to D, I have to go down by, I go from one in this, or positive one down to negative four. Well, from one to four, that means I'm going down five units. Then from uh, point C, which is at positive one over two, negative three, this is gonna be a difference of four units to the left or four negative. Now, when I do rise over run or my slope calculation, here's what's gonna happen. The rise was negative five. The run was negative four. As a slope, this is gonna be equal to, so let me back this up. Slope is equal to negative five over negative four, which is equal to actually positive five over four, which should make sense because in previous grades or even pre previous classes, we've denoted that we say when we go from left to right, if this thing is increasing, it must be that it is a positive slope. Now, for our last example, E to F, if I'm going from E to F, I have to go down by some units to the right by some units. Well, I'm going down one, two, three, four, five units. So I'm going negative five units down and then over three units. Therefore, when we talk about rise and run, we're gonna say this is negative five units down, three units to the right. Slope is gonna be equal to negative five over three. Okay, and as a slope, we would know this is negative because when we go from left to right, it is decreasing. All right, we move on to our next page here, and we're gonna do an investigation of when we have a bunch of points that are on the same line, what does this actually mean in terms of the slope of this? So let's say we consider A to B first of all. Well, A to B, if I look at this line, I know I have to go up two units over three units. So when we talk about rise and run, it's gonna be two and three for run, where my slope is equal to two over three. Now, let's consider A to C. When I go from A to C, I have to go up by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units, and then over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So when we talk about rise, it's gonna be eight, run is twelve, therefore my slope is equal to eight over twelve, which actually reduces down to two over three. Now, this is an interesting finding because right away we're seeing what happens when you have points on the same line and no matter what points you choose, you actually get the same slope. So I don't even need to calculate the rise or run in the other ones. What I'm gonna do is just jump right to the slope. I know it's gonna be two over three. M is gonna be two over three because no matter what points I choose, whether it's A or D, B or C, if I compare, let's say, yeah, A to D, or B to C, as long as those points exist on the same line, their slope will be the same. Therefore, this leads us into our conclusionary point, or our conjecture in this case, which is how are the slopes of the lines related? They are the same. So they are the same values. 
And we're actually going to discover on the next page here, it is that because they are collinear. So this is a, term, a piece of terminology that's going to pop up, but collinear is why these things share the same slope. Now, slope of a line. We look at any slope of a line, and it says that we are looking at the rise or run. So we say that if the slopes of all line segments are equal, then it must be that they're collinear. But now let's move into an investigation too, which says, what if I look at slopes of horizontal versus vertical line segments? Well, in terms of horizontal lines, I'm going to draw an arrow to all three of these graphs and then make a generalization about all horizontal lines. If I want slope, it's equal to the change in, in y over the change in x. Well, in terms of a horizontal line, there's no change in y, but there is a change in x. Therefore, the slope is zero. So we know that for the slopes of all graphs in grid one, this is going to be zero. Now, in terms of grid two, here's what we're going to do. We're going to point a line to all three of these lines. So k and l, i and j, g and h. And we're going to make a generalization about these. The slope is equal to the change in y over the change in x. Well, we know the change in y in any of these is going to be some vertical distance over the change in x. There is no change in x. We can't divide anything by this zero. Right away, this is a huge no-go. So we can never divide uh, anything by zero or have zero in the denominator. Therefore, here's what we're going to say about this, that this does not exist, D and E, which can also be symbolized by this backwards E with a line through it, does not exist. Or we say that the slope is undefined undefined. So the one that you'll see most common or the definition of this being in terms of slope would be undefined most commonly, but we know that does not exist or this backwards view with the line through it is also symbolic of this. So what I'm going to do is below, I'm just going to say this is undefined for all vertical slopes, undefined for all vertical slopes, especially the ones that are a vertical line like this. Now we know that horizontal line segments in general all have slopes of zero and then Vertical line segments in general all have an undefined slope. There we go. All right, now going to our next investigation, we're going to look at these and be like, okay, well, if I look at the Cartesian plane and I have a line segment in the Cartesian plane, we know an increasing or positive graph is when we go left to right, if it's increasing, that's positive. If it's left to right and it's going down, we know this is negative or decreasing. So when we look at our grid one, these all represent positive, uh, positive slopes. On the, in terms of our grid two, these all represent negative slopes. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill out the table with the slopes of these, given the fact that I know one's positive, one's negative. Well, let's start off with grid one and getting all their slopes. If I look at these, what something I want you to notice right away is the endpoints are floating out in kind of the middle of nowhere. You would have to guess what this value is in terms of the X and Y. So based on collinearity, where we have points that are on the same line, giving us the same slope, we're going to pick for sure points on these graphs. So I'm going to maybe pick this point here and this point here. And I'm going to do that for all the rest of the graphs. I want to be really sure of the points. So I'm going to pick intersection points where we know they actually intersect on the graph. Now, in terms of line one, we have to go up two over three. And so the slope is going to be simply two over three. In terms of line two, we have to go up by a certain amount of units. In this case, we go up by five units over by two. Therefore, my slope is going to be five over two. And then lastly, in line three, we go up one over three, up one over three. Therefore, my slope is rise of three over by three or rise of one over by three, I should say. Now, in terms of lines four, five, and six, where we have negative slopes, I'm going for, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I know the endpoints are kind of floating out there in the middle of nowhere. So I'm just going to pick two for sure points on each of the graphs. And then once I know these two concrete points or for sure points on the graph, I'm going to use those to help me solve for the slope. There we go. Now, in terms of line four, we have to go down by a certain amount of units and over by a certain amount, down by two, over by three. Therefore, the slope of line four is two over three. We go to line five where we have to go down by a certain amount of units over by a certain amount. We go over by two units and we go down by what looks to be negative five units. Therefore, I get negative 5 over 2. Lastly, we go to line 6, and we see that we go down by 1 unit over by 3, or negative 1 over 3, and therefore we get negative 1 over 3. 
All right, compare the slopes of these. So what they want us to do is they say, well, if I compare one to four, and then five to, or two to five, I should say, and then three to six, we're comparing all of these graphs. Well, what I look at is when I compare one and four, two and five, three and six, I realize that they're negative uh, versions of each other. So I look at the first one, two over three in comparison to negative two over three. It's the negative slope. So all that's changed from graph in this case, or grid one to two, is that we're saying, we have the same line segments, but instead their orientation is changed. One's a positive slope, one's a negative slope. So generally below all of these, we can say one is positive, one is negative. One is positive, and I'll short form it as this. One is positive, one is negative. There we go. Now, a line which rises from left to right has a positive slope, and then one that decreases from left to right has a negative slope. There we go. We go to our next page here and we're gonna deal with some applied problems or more specifically three applied problems that deal with calculating slope. In the first one, they say we have some sort of contractor where we superimpose a grid over this contractor at work. They say estimate the pitch or slope of the roof that is to the right of the worker's head, meaning this roof here. Well, I'm going to zoom in here, and because we're doing estimates, we're just going to try and pick two points that are for sure on the roof. So what I realize is that we have a point here that's for sure, and maybe I should do this in red just to make sure we got some color here. We got a point here, and we got a point, let's say, about here. So those are two points that exist on that roof there. Well, to get from one point to another, I have to increase by one unit and over by three units. So increase by one. I run by three units. Therefore, when I do my slope calculation here of that segment, I know that the slope is going to be equal to the rise over run, which is one third, and we can call this one third units. Reason we're going to put units is that they didn't say it was in feet or centimeters or inches or whatever. They just told us, hey, if I superimpose this uh, Cartesian plane over this uh, contractor at work, what do I got? Um, and then they say, could we use an estimate of the pitch of the work or, or of the roof that he's standing on? Meaning, if I look at where the contractor is, here's the contractor. The roof he's standing on is this segment here. So again, in order to provide an estimate, I'm going to have to pick two points that exist somewhere on this roof segment. In this case, I'm going to pick here and here. And then I have to calculate from left to right. We decrease by a certain amount, go over by a certain amount. So I get negative two units and positive one. And so now when I calculate the slope of this or the pitch, as they call it, well, the pitch of this roof is going to be M is equal to negative two over one, which could be simplified as negative two. Now, sometimes it's helpful to see it in terms of this fraction here, because if you just see a slope as, a, as an integer value, sometimes you're like, well, where's the, where's the run? Because all I'm seeing is some sort of value in the numerator with nothing in the denominator. So you just need to be aware that you can divide any sort of integer value by one and it will get itself. So if you see a slope that's just an integer, just assume that the denominator or the run is one. So we get negative two units represents the slope of this other pitch. Now, this is a quite realistic problem because on any sort of roof, you're gonna have more flat areas or more horizontal uh, pitches, and then you're gonna have more vertical pitches, which is something with a greater value. Something I want you to realize from last page is we discussed this idea of, well, we know horizontal lines have a slope of that is flat. So like it's a horizontal line would look like this and its slope would be equal to zero and something with a undefined slope would be something vertical like this. And so what we should anticipate is that when we have a value of one third or something closer to zero, approximately close to zero, we know this is going to be a flatter line segment. Whereas when we look at something with a value of two, which is definitely greater than one and approaching something larger like infinity, we know this is going to edge towards something that has a more vertical line segment. So if I compare the pitches here, one third, that was fairly flat. Whereas when I went to something with two, I realized this was more vertical. All right, let's continue on to the next problem. Draw the line segment, which is on the grid and passes through point negative four, two with a slope of negative two and three. Well, if they give us a point, what we want to do is plot that point right away. I'm going to go to my grid and say, well, negative four and two is right here. And then what we want to do is use the slope to help us get the coordinates of three other points. 
and in fact draw the line. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at our graph here and I'm just gonna sketch out three other points using the fact that we have the slope. Well, the slope is negative, meaning when I look at my graph, it should go from the blue line and slope downwards like this. It should go left to right in a decreasing manner. So I'm gonna go one, two units down, over three units. So there's one point, down two units, over three. That puts me here, down two units, over by three, there we go. Now we can draw a line segment that connects these three points and then list the points out. One thing I want you to notice though is when I draw the line, I'm going to put arrows on the end. From our last unit, we realized that if there's no restriction on the domain, then these will have arrows on the end, meaning there's no set x values this graph has to be. It can technically be infinite, so we're going to put arrows on the end indicating that this just continues on. Now, for this piece here, they say we want three other coordinates. Well, the three other coordinates, let's just draw an arrow to our graph, and we're just going to list them directly on our Cartesian plane. In terms of if I was on a test or assessment, I would list them under the question. But in this case, we want to be really concrete and show them directly on the graph just so that we can show where these points are coming from. So I look at the first black line that's past the blue line that was given, and this is going to be at negative 1 and 0. It's actually an x-intercept. We go to our next point, which is 2 and negative 2. And then finally, we have our point of what looks to be 5 for x and then negative 4 for y. So these are three other points that exist on the line that passes through negative 4 and 2 with a slope of negative 2 over 3. All right, last problem for our lesson today, and that's dealing with if a line segment has a slope of this, and then a rise of 12, calculate the run as an exact value. Exact value, here comes that terminology again. We don't want a decimal value. We want something that's as a reduced fraction or a reduced mixed radical, if it was that type of problem. Now, we look at a line segment with a slope of this, and it says a rise of 12. Well, what they're actually asking us to do is say, well, if the slope is this, and they're giving us a comparable rise, then what is the run that makes this a comparable fraction? So what we're going to do is we're going to say, I'm going to cross multiply my x from my denominator, cross multiply my 7 from the denominator on the left hand side. Well, this is going to give us negative 5x is equal to 12 times 7 is 84. Last step we have to do here in order to get my x value or the run is to divide by negative 5. All right. Now, this means that x is going to be equal to negative 84 over 5, which is symbolic of the run that makes this true. So if we have a rise of 12, then it must be that the run is negative 84 over 5. So in green here, I'm just going to annotate this. The x value that makes up the run is this negative 84 over 5, and that would make these fractions of negative 5 over 7 and 12 over negative 84 over 5 equal to one another. And you could reduce them just to show it. So realistically, I'm going to continue this in green here. If you wanted to reduce this and show that negative 5 is equal to 12 divided by 84 over 5 negative, you could reduce that as a fraction and you would see that both sides are equal to one another, thus proving this. All right, here's where you want to get work on your assignment because you want to be comfortable with calculating slopes of lines, whether they be positive or negative, and understanding that it is always going to be rise over run. And I highly encourage, always read these graphs left to right.